Today we're going to be talking about taking a blood pressure and it is one of the most important things that you can do in your evaluation and it's something that most therapists don't do. In order to take a blood pressure you need two things. You need a sphygmomomometer and you need a stethoscope. Now a lot of places also have the automatic blood pressure cuffs and we'll talk about those as well but it's important to learn how to do this properly with these pieces of equipment. So the sphygmomomometer comes in a variety of sizes and they're based upon the arm width of your patient. And one of the easy ways we're going to show you in a second to make sure that it's in the proper range is because if you wrap it around the arm it should fall within this range here. And we're going to show that on a patient in a minute. And that's really important because if a blood pressure cuff is too big or too small, it's going to alter your readings and give you some false readings and that can lead to improper blood pressure. So you need to make sure that you have the proper size for your patient. Uh, one of the key part here is the bladder that's inside of here. And the bladder, when it's properly placed, will go around about 80% of the arm. And the rest of it is the Velcro. It's really important that the bladder does not go 100% around the arm because that's going to give you some improper readings. And then the other component is we need to make sure that we are aligning this properly with the brachial artery in through here. Uh, don't go by where the tubes come out. That is not correct because again if this bladder is not uh, set properly you can get some improper readings. And this is the same whether it's a manual or a, an automatic blood pressure cuff. Um, I've had some students use the automatic ones on me and they just wrap it around the arm and they don't take the time to line up properly and they obtain some improper blood pressure readings. So we have our patient that we're going to be taking the blood pressure on and we've got our cuff and remember how I said that I was going to show you that the proper fit. So here's our, our range again and if we put the blood pressure cuff on inside out basically and see where the overlap is, where that line comes across, it's approximately um, a little more than halfway mid-range on our patient and so um, this is a proper size for them. So if it's not, if it doesn't fall in that, if it's down in this area it's too small, if it's up in this area it's too large. So as I'm pushing uh, the sphygmomomometer on, I want to make sure that I align properly. So in this case sometimes you only have one mark. This one we actually have two, one for the right arm, one for the left arm. So I want the patient to turn their arm out and expose the antecubital fossa and I want to make sure that I am lining this up properly with the antecubital fossa. The other thing that I want to make sure where I place the blood pressure cuff properly is it needs to be about an inch above the antecubital fossa here and you can check yourself if you put, can put two fingers in between there then that's correct placement. The other aspect is that the cuff should take up about two-thirds of the upper arm. Again, if I put two or three fingers up in here, then I know that I have this cuff properly uh, placed on my patient. So one of the other things that I've done before we put this on is I've uh, placed the dial on the blood pressure cuff and in an area that I can read it properly. Sometimes people won't put it on there, they won't secure it, and then halfway through the blood pressure reading it falls off, or they put it on their lap or on the table, and again, they aren't able to read it properly. You want to make sure that it's secure, and you also want to make sure that you clip it straight up and down and it's not sideways so that you're not reading uh, sideways when you're taking your blood pressure measurement. So if you've noticed, I haven't even picked up my stethoscope yet. And the reason for that is because the next component that I need to do is I need to make sure that I get a correct reading. And so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to obliterate uh, the radial pulse. Uh, the other thing I want to make sure though is that my brachial artery is at the level of the heart. His arm is a little low here, so I probably should have it maybe supported somewhere. If this is too low, you need to relax, but he needs to be nice and relaxed for me. 
I can also come up and tuck his arm into my side here. If you notice, when I do this, I can still use both hands to take um, my blood pressure. But for demonstration purposes, relax, we're going to have it down here, and he needs to be relaxed. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find the radial pulse, and then I'm going to pump this up, and I'm going to look to see when I lose that radial pulse. All right. And in this case, I've lost it at 130 millimeters of mercury. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to let my patient rest. Now here's a good time. One of the things you can do if you're still checking the um, radial pulse is while I'm waiting that minute rest in between, I can take their uh, pulse rate while they're sitting here, followed by their respiration rate. So that is one thing that you can do. But the reason you don't want to pump it up again so fast is you want to give the arteries a chance, because basically what you're doing is you're compressing and occluding the brachial artery, and we don't want to continue with that. So at 1.30, my radial pulse disappeared. And again, we, the reason we do this is to avoid the osculatory gap. And, you know, that occurs in about 10% of the population, which can lead to, again, the underestimation of the systolic or the overestimation of diastolic. So now, if you notice, I finally pick up my stethoscope and get ready to take the blood pressure. Again, I want to make sure I put my stethoscope in properly. I like to have the earbuds pointing forward. I usually take a second just to tap my diaphragm and make sure that I can hear uh, properly. Now, when you put the stethoscope on, first of all, if any of the blood pressure cuff obliterates or comes over the top of the stethoscope, then my blood pressure cuff is too low or it's too large. The other thing that will do is, again, it will affect my reading, and I want to make sure that I don't have it on, um, I don't have the cuff down too low because as I go to pump it up, it's going to put extra pressure on there. The second thing that you want to do is make sure that your fingers are placed on each side of the diaphragm here. You don't, a lot of people will put their thumb on top or push down on the top here. Again, that leads to unnecessary pressure. It also might be some unevenness and so you're not hearing correctly. So just place your two fingers on each side of the bell and just hold there uh, lightly. So now we're ready, and what we're going to do, remember, it was 130, so I need to go to 160 is what I need to pump it up to. The other reason we do the, os the radio pulse is we don't want to pump it up too high if we don't need to. Now I'm going to slowly open this up so it moves about 2 to 3 millimeters a second. I'm going a little too slow there. I heard my first core cough sound. They get a little louder, and now it's faded away. So I'm going to release the rest of the air um, out of the bladder. If you notice while you're taking this, so again, two to three millimeters a second, you'll see that the dial and the needle does move when the blood is pulsing through. However, that doesn't always necessarily align with the um, Korokoff sounds, and so you need to make sure that you're listening and not watching and get fooled or confused by when the dial starts to move. And go ahead and record that uh, blood pressure at this time, and remember to uh, consider what the different readings are They've changed from what's in your book, so make sure you use what's in the slide rather than what's in the book. Um, the other thing to remember is that one blood pressure, you cannot say when someone comes in and has 142 over 92 that they have high blood pressure. Remember that you have to have several high readings before you can actually make that assertion.